Bayushi Shoju, Scorpion Clan Champion, and the Master of Secrets and Lies, spars with Bayushi Yuniko. Shoju uses the sparring match to test and push Yuniko's loyalty to him. At a point, they change to using real katanas, and Shoju commands Yuniko to attempt to kill him. Even with Shoju's shriveled arm, he is able to keep up with Yuniko's fiery attacks until he eventually bests her, pinning her to the floor with his katana at her throat. She gives up her life to him and to the scorpion, ready at that moment to die. Shoju is pleased, getting the declaration of loyalty he was hoping for from the candidate for command of the Bayushi elite guard. At that point, Bayushi Kachiko, Shoju's wife and the imperial advisor, interrupts their match. After Yuniko leaves, Kachiko teases Shoju about his potential desire to make Yuniko his concubine. He brushes it off, saying Kachiko is the only woman he needs and agrees to meet with her after a bath. When the two meet, Kachiko finds Shoju experimenting with the koi in a small pond where they had planned to meet. He uses his hand to influence the movement of the koi. Something deceptively simple reflects the way he wishes to influence the direction of the clans of Rokugan. The two begin to walk and talk, surrounded by servants tending to the gardens of the capital, all of which are actually agents of Scorpion, using their presence and movement to ensure no one would be able to approach Shoju and Kachiko closely enough to overhear what they might have to say. Shoju is troubled, and Kachiko asks him to share his concerns with her. Shoju compares the Empire to a kabuki play, saying the Scorpion's place close to the Emperor puts them center stage, where the intention is most focused. Shoju questions whether or not the Scorpion should instead be the Kuroko, the stagehands dressed in black who move the props and scenery as the play progresses, their control of the stage making them arguably the most important members of the play from his perspective. Kachiko does her best to assure him that their place in the Imperial Court is not only one that is well earned, but one where they belong. She mentions that their place gives them a unique ability to truly influence all of Rokugan due to the rest of the clans being in turmoil. The famine of the crane, the dragon's low birth rate and rise of the perfect land sect, the crab's fight on the carpenter wall, and the phoenix's difficulty communicating with the kami. Shoju expresses concern about Doji Hotaru and how she might seek power in the courts after her father's death. Kachiko reassures him that Hotaru, her secret lover, is nothing to be worried about and that the growing friendship of the unicorn and crane would not grow into an alliance of any consequence. Shoju continues sharing his concerns about the crab and how they have begun to resent them, as well as how the other clans seem to have more and more reasons to distrust and be against the scorpion. Kachiko suggests that perhaps falling into the shadows like the Kuroko of the play isn't actually the way to fix their problems, but perhaps it is instead to swiftly take more influence and control. She mentions the Hante Emperor, the 38th of his line, and one who has seemed to fall out of favor with heaven due to all of the troubles plaguing the Empire. She insists that the Empire needs a strong leader, one like Bayushi Shoju of the Scorpion Clan. Shoju scolds her for her implication that he should take the place of a Hante, an emperor chosen by the heavens. This garden effectively belonged to the scorpion, but it wasn't a complete certainty that no one would overhear the high-reaching aspirations Kachiko may have had for her husband. The two changed the subject, continuing to walk and talk about the issues plaguing the empire. In the northern mountains of the Dragon Clan, Miramoto Masashige journeys to the High House of Light in order to speak with Dragon Clan champion Togashi Yokuni. The clan has suffered from extremely low birth rates for quite some time now, and it has impacted the samurai population significantly. If that wasn't trouble enough, the perfect land sect had been slowly growing in influence, becoming more violent throughout the lands of the dragon. The perfect land sect believe that the path to enlightenment can be attained by chanting a single phrase, Shoshi Nikie, and they do not need to learn difficult practices or cultivate merit within themselves. This practice is very popular with the peasantry and is completely outlawed by the phoenix who consider it heresy. The dragon, on the other hand, believe that minds should be open to all paths to enlightenment, although the sect's recent violent outbursts and belief that samurai are actually responsible for the problems of the world have become seriously problematic. Once Masashige finally arrives at the High House of Light, he is brought before Togashi Yokuni. He expresses the concerns of birth rate and the perfect land sect and offers up a possible solution join with the phoenix. With their help, they may be able to find an answer to their population problem, but the phoenix would require a concession, either having the dragons separate themselves from the Meishoto practicing unicorn, or expelling the perfect land sect from their lands entirely. Losing the protection of the unicorn's army could leave the dragon as easy prey for the other clans. Alternatively, bringing war upon the dragon clan's own people could cause the sect to lash out harshly, gaining more followers. 
So, Masashige suggests using Togashi Kazue's ability to tap into the minds of people and neutralize the leaders of the sect. All of these problems and suggestions are offered to Yokuni, who stays almost completely silent. Finally, he responds, but not in any way Masashige wanted or expected. The Dragon Clan champion's head rears back and his body seizes up as he receives a vision, a gift with which previous Dragon Clan champions had all been blessed. He sees a great wave rising up to strike the land. Where it strikes, it leaves devastation. Otosan Uchi, the imperial capital, laid to waste. Stripped by the wave, the wasteland becomes a battlefield. On its barren plain, there is nowhere for the enemy to hide, no shelter to protect them from the Empire's might. Whatever the meaning of this vision was, Masashige feared it had nothing to do with any of the troubles he had traveled all that way to address. Yokuni focuses back on Masashige, ordering the daimyo to prepare his bushi and to send word to the Agasha and Katsuki families. It was time for the dragon to finally move beyond their borders. The things transpiring in the mountains of the dragon homeland were mere pebbles against the avalanche that was coming. In Ryoko Owari, the city of lies, Yogohiro Yue watches as Katsuki Shoman and Bayushi Gensato duel at a gathering put on by the governor of the city, Shosuro Hiobu. Katsuki Shoman was a sensei of the Miramoto style from the land of the dragon, and Gensato had disparaged her style publicly as she had been teaching the style to regular folk. She normally would not have ever attended a party put on by Hiobu, but was compelled to be there for the duel. Little did she know, Hiro Yue had taken this opportunity to get some alone time with her. Hiro Yue had been sent to the City of Lies to this particular gathering to investigate Shomon herself. Despite the criticism she has received from many, Shomon runs a dojo in the city for common folk. One of her students, Sato, joined the Perfect Land sect, and so it had come to the attention of some in the Scorpion clan that perhaps Shomon was a Perfect Land sympathizer, or even a member herself, training the increasingly violent sect with dangerous fighting techniques. If this were true, it could mean that the Dragon Clan was in fact throwing their support behind the sect. The Scorpion saw an opportunity to use Shomon or the sect, or at the very least, to know a potential enemy, and so sent one of their best seducers. After Shomon wins her duel, Hiroyue finds a quiet corner to play his shamisen. He knew the sensei has no real desire to be at the party, but won't leave and offend the governor. So he plays a pleasant tune and gives her a quiet corner to retreat and talk. The two end up talking about religion and paths to enlightenment. As they talk, Hiroyue becomes more and more convinced that Shomon actually has nothing to do with the sect, as she insists her teaching of fighting techniques is actually her way of helping others seek enlightenment. She still follows the common dragon teaching that there are many paths to enlightenment, but she insists that some may be wrong, implying the perfect land sect is one of those incorrect paths. Shomon eventually leaves and Hiroyue stays behind. He feels confident that if the dragon clan is somehow supporting the perfect land sect, that Shomon's dojo has nothing to do with it. As he begins to play his shamisen once more, the silent third party of the conversation appears, Shosiro Miyako, and after listening in on the entire conversation, She also feels that Shomon was sincere in her beliefs and had nothing to do with the sect. That, or she is such a good liar, that she should open a dojo and teach the scorpion a thing or two. Hiroyue commands Miyako to head north, to disguise herself as a peasant and infiltrate the sect. He tells her to find out what their goals are, and if they have ties to the dragon beyond Shomon's student Sato. Whatever she found could be useful leverage for Scorpion to sell, as an offer to remove a threat, or to light a spark in just the right place to turn this pile of tinder into a wildfire. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the stories this video is based on. For L5R lore videos and more, please click on that subscribe button. Thank you.